this is another update on my Z80 project and I was asked in response to the previous video about how I can have different interleave on the first few tracks of the floppy disk compared to the rest of the disk and had I got a special way of formatting it and uh, no the f formatting is done normally so the formatting is sequential um, all the tracks are laid down with the sectors in sequential order so the sectors are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 etc for the first track 1, 2, 3, 4 etc for the next track where the interleave comes in is in how you interpret the uh, sectors when you try and read them so for example the machine will have what we can refer to as a virtual sector number 1, 2, 3, 4 etc but that is mapped to different physical sectors on the drive so for example sector 2 the virtual sector 2 when the machine wants to write to sector 2 is actually mapped so that sector 8 is being accessed on the disk now where the confusion seems to have come in is I said that we were doing full track continuous reads in the boot process and that I was using different uh, interleave for the first tracks during the boot than I was using when a CPM starts up and starts accessing the disk itself and uh, I was asked about something I haven't demonstrated which is the warm boot facility for CPM now if you're not familiar with CPM once you've booted it the operating system is of course in RAM and it consists of three major parts you've got the CCP at the start at the kind of bottom end of the RAM block that contains CPM above that you've got the BDOS and above that you've got the BIOS now the BIOS is the bit of uh, the software that we fundamentally write that um, is an interface between CPM core and the actual physical hardware so it's kind of unique to each type of machine and that's what I've written specifically for this machine now when you do a cold boot you have to load all three of those blocks from the floppy disk into RAM and then you hand control to the start and CPM finishes the loading now if you run a piece of software that doesn't need the CCP or BDOS and uh, needs a lot of RAM bear in mind that CPM was originally shipped on machines that may only have had 20k of RAM um, so to minimize the usage of RAM by CPM if the software is running uh, autonomously what it can do is actually overwrite the CCP and BDOS sections in RAM but that does of course mean you can't then just jump straight back to CPM when that software exits because CPM is no longer installed so CPM has what's uh, referred to as a warm boot function and um, in essence when CPM first starts up it loads an address into the bottom of RAM that is a jump to um, an address in CPM BIOS for a warm boot so when software exits under a CPM system in theory it should branch to address 0 that contains the vector that will then forward that branch and it will then run the warm boot function which is in the CPM BIOS which is still in RAM so what will then happen is the warm boot function will reread the CCP and BDOS from a floppy disk copy that into the correct location in RAM and then hand control back to the start of the CCP block and the machine will effectively reboot from that point but the question I was asked is well how can it do that if I'm using interleave in uh, CPM but the bootloader is uh, just using the tracks sequentially won't um, CPM get confused when it tries to do a warm boot and the answer is no because the way I've written the um, warm boot uh, function it reverts to using sequential track numbering and in fact it does full track reads as well like the bootloader the cold bootloader does from the floppy disk so I thought I'd demonstrate this in order to try and explain this uh, a bit more clearly so I've got a disk in the drive I've got a modified version of the game of life game on the disk that after 50 iterations will actually exit 
and um, branch to the vector that's stored at address 0 and that should trigger the warm boot from CPM. I've also tinkered a bit with some of the interleave values and the way the buffers are handled and if you remember originally this took about 26 seconds to boot and after changing to full track reads in the bootloader we got that down to 13 seconds we'll try it now that I've made some more changes to it so again using the stopwatch I'll press the B key to start the boot process press the stopwatch start button at the same time and we'll see how long the boot now takes so we'll wait until the A prompt appears and then I'll stop the stopwatch and it's now booting in 11 seconds so that's uh, good it's two seconds faster than it was uh, but if we now run a program such as uh, the game of life that exits it will result in us um, branching to the uh, warm boot function but we can now trigger that directly I have now implemented the control functions the monitor uh, didn't use the control functions so they weren't implemented and one issue when you're using a PS2 keyboard is that the keys don't return different values for shifted keys and control keys so for example the C key returns the same a value whether you press the shift key and the C key or just the C key on its own so the system has to keep track of whether the control key or the shift key were pressed down and if they're still down when another key is pressed and then it has to interpret the values differently but I've now implemented that in the CPM so uh, we should be able to press control C so you can't see it but I'm pressing control C on the keyboard and we'll time how long this takes for the A prompt to reappear. Okay, so seven seconds. So that's quite good. It's uh, now starting to respond at a speed that makes it more usable. But if we try to run the game that I mentioned, oops, need to type it incorrectly. will run the game it will run for 50 iterations and then it will branch to the warm boot loader and you'll see the general speed of the machine now so the iteration counts at the bottom to the 30 40 it's exited and it's now rebooting CPM so as you can see it now boots nice and quickly the it only takes about six seconds to go from the game exiting before the A prompt reappears and CPM is back up and running and the game of life the reason I use that game it uses a lot of RAM so I have actually configured it to overwrite the CCP and BDOS it doesn't need to there's enough RAM not to do that in this system but I thought it would be a good demonstration as to the way that the warm boot loader works so the main issue here is um, when CPM is reading and writing the disk it uses interleave but when the bootloader um, that's copied from the disk in a cold boot or the warm boot uh, loader run it uses the uh, tracks sequentially and uh, also the warm boot loader only loads CCP and BDOT it doesn't load the BIOS like the cold boot loader does so hopefully that's clarified things a little bit and, and as you can see the machine now runs at quite a reasonable speed it feels like a proper uh, machine now as opposed to being a bit clunky and slow as it was when I first started testing the floppy drive so a small amount of development and we get a machine that same hardware haven't modified the hardware um, but small changes to the way the code runs and we get much better performance from our machine